Good morning. We're at the winter match play competition at Milton Keynes, which has been going for probably 30 or 40 years now, hosted by Mike Willis. Um, round, sorry, I'm Colin Northmore, and Jessica Pratizi is at the venue running the technology. And I'm Colin Northmore, I'm based in the northeast in Sunderland. And game one is between Jessica's mother, Diane Pratizi, against John Ashmore. So I should look forward to a decent game here. Right, it appears to be Diane to start. With a rack of J-T-K-M-R-N-O. Um... With a quick look, the best I can see is Monk, M-O-N-K. Um, obviously in a position like this, sometimes looking to get rid of the J, but I think it's a, a better turnover and got more chance of picking synergistic tiles next time if we play off both the M and the K rather than just the J. And we'd be keeping JRT in this occasion. The top move above my monk is actually Tron, T-R-O-N-K, which I can't say I was um, over familiar with, which no doubt I should be. Diane has actually played monk. Um, I haven't seen or played Diane for a long time. We used to have a few good games and Diane used to have this instinct of being able to block my bingos nearly all the time, which is a great skill. Um, we're on to John Ashmore now. John's got D-E-V-E-G-E-I, which is a bit too much of a richness of the very nice ease. Uh, at the worst, we've got something like V-E-E -E on the top of monk but uh, G is not a very nice tile so we're looking to get rid of the G as well as the V and maybe two E's uh, veggie I believe is good V-E-G-I-E -E. that would be a decent move from I4 down to give a decent track balance um, I don't mean I3 of course which is the top move uh, John plays Vide, which keeps G E E. Um, it did show my my move as top move, and it it, it gave a, a better rack leave of just D E rather than G E E. Uh, Vide's one of these words which people get sucked into playing in S occasionally. I I did that in my early playing days, but V I D E only takes an O after it. I remember it was a game against Ash Coldrick at York in 2013 or 14. But back, um, back to Diane Pratizi's turn. Diane's one point behind with a rack of Shrap, F-R-A-P plus H-J-T. Uh, a lot of three heavy, sorry, four heavy constants here, J-P-H-F. Looking to get rid of at least two of these. There's the the usual Harge H A J. Um, doesn't appear anywhere to play it for for points alone. J A until the K Jack, which I believe a fruit is good, which would be thirty points, but it wouldn't be solving the um, the preponderance of heavy consents. The top play is actually Jap. It seems Diane's played Raft, which is the third best move, which um, keeps the board nice and tight, which Diane's uh, notorious for, and it's, it's quite a skill. Um, so keep JPH and scoring quite well and keeping the board tight. Um, John's got a 
funny old drac. If this was a word, it would be nice. G well, G E E W E L L, as in Orson G well, Orson G Wells. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at my bad jokes here. Um, we'd be looking ideally to get rid of the W G, couple of E's. While being rabbiting on the top, top play is wheel, according to, to Crackle making Odal, which I believe is a, a room in a harem or similar. Uh, John's played wheel peeping leg, which is a decent leave. And John has got a two point lead. It's uh, Diane's go now, and she has got zero vowels, and the board is very tight, and I can't see any play. Um, potentially there's BRR, but there doesn't seem anywhere to hook it on to, so I'd suggest changing everything the 1R here. And Diane's changed 7, which is fair enough. So, John's turn again with a 2 point lead. He's got G-E-L-O-I-T-D, which is a sort of nearly rack Again, the, the board's tight, so it's um, not easy to play. There's something simple like God to the right of wheel at the top there. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything obvious here, and there's definitely no playthroughs for, for eights, which this rack could do with. Um, I'm not certain, but I think that Wheel might take a T front hook. It will take an A front hook. Um, Twill. The, the top move, according to Quackle, is Diglot, which I believe is a, a written in two languages, which is a nice move, which I have played before. Um, John plays gold, which was the second best move and can't be argued with, with a rack leave of T-I-E. So John takes a 29-point lead. Diane's had a full clear out of Iraq and picked up Q-I-N, H-E-N-D. Um, Q-I-N's always looked to play off straight away if if possible if there's nothing better and it was the best move and Diane has played this for 33 points to take a commanding four point lead uh, John's got a five vowel rack um, it could be nice with a with a floater but the board is so tight there aren't any floaters the only eight available be ending in the K of Monk, which is not going to be of fruition in this case. Anyway, John's got A A U R E I T. So too many vowels basically, and we'll be looking to play off at least two vowels. Um, there's potentially A U before K to make Orc. Or A U A down from the T of Raft. Um, neither skill very much and open the board up substantially. Uh, but the top cockle move is Q U A, which I had seen, but I wouldn't be over keen on putting an A in the triple triple lane and scoring another 12 points in the process. Um, John has played the A U A, which was one of my two possibilities on my short list um, and has got rid of three vowels to balance his, his rack more than just playing the two for walk. Back on today and she's got Harge which is Crackle's best move and she's played it very quickly and if I glance her letters correctly she may have a this next move I, I think they were just random letters which flashed up Right, John's got Hetio, which I'm sure is not a word, but is there an anagram of Hetio? Of course, there's uh, going to be good points from the 
J on the triple line at the, on the bottom row. About the top players Hegera through the through the J. It's a uh, top point scoring wise by by a distance. It's got a valuation crackle of forty nine point nine, which is eleven clear of any other play. Scores nice then gives a nice rack leave of extraterrestrial ET. Uh, yeah, it, it, John can't be looking beyond playing through the J as it, it's sort of dangerous and team may, may as well take it. it. It was worth Diane playing it through, through the uh, high number of points scored under a lead of 52 points. And potentially it's HIE to the right of the Q in the top right hand corner. Um, but this would be leaving the leaving the J open and John has played Jeet. Uh, I didn't spot Hegira straight away. I was prompted by by Quackle and uh, John's got a leave of higher H I R E. So Diane's on play with a 19 point lead and she has picked up a blank but has got four heavyish constants to go with it including a Y which is obviously a, a quasi vowel. So Diane's got P F V Y N E blank. So we'll be looking to, uh, there will be no bingo available even with the um, dream pickup of a, a blank because the rest of the pickup isn't quite as dreamy as that. So Diane should be looking to play off at least two of Sailor V, Y, F and P to give her a good rack balance. Can't see any standout players at the moment. This FY making FAH on the bottom right, right quadrant. Um, need to look harder for something a little better than that, to be honest. There are limited opportunities on this board. Some players might go into, like, maybe at a low, lower level, go into snap decision and change for being a PFVY straight away, which wouldn't be a, a bad move, but, um, you know, to win games at a high high level, you can't pass up decent scoring points, even if it's, like, only 20 or so. Mm. The FY that I mentioned is Cockle's second best move for 17 points, but it's outdone by nine points by F-E-Y on the same spot making F-A-H, um, which is a valuable nine extra points. Um, I'm trying to think if F-E-Y takes, takes an S. I think it is a probably both a verb and an ad adjective to clear out or a similar definition. So we'll take an S. There aren't any S's gone. So if F-E-Y definitely does take an S, there's, well, obviously I'm in a position to have seen John's rack and I don't believe he had one unless he, he picked one up, which I, I believe he, he may have. But possibly F-Y could just be played here, leaving, leaving Diane with a, a vowel to go with a lovely P-Y, etc., a change was about halfway down on Quackle's top dozen, dozen plays. Diane has indeed played FY keeping the vowel E N P V blank. Uh, John has picked up an S along with E I to go with his higher H I R E. Um, it would be nice if there was an eight until a T, but I do not believe there would be. The easy play here would just be maybe HI onto the AT of Jeet or HIE down to the right of the Q in the top corner. 
Um, it would that would leave a much better Iraq balance. The H I E keeping rise R I S E. I've got a feeling W O N takes an S, so highs and ones would be one point. Crackle's top play is uh, sort of beyond my thinking at the moment. It had it was extending monk to monkeries, which is excellent to say the least. Uh, so John has played a HIE with a good rack balance and picked up the blank. Diane has picked up the TR to give with a blank prevent, but there would appear not to be anywhere to play it. Um, GIE at the top, I believe, takes an end, but the end. So you could play down from that, but ha haven't really got the lettuce to score well for that. Uh, potentially there's something like pen to the right of, which is actually the top move and is played straight away, maybe QIN. I think we'll be seeing John uh, bonus on this move with a blank for Nelly's got a risible R-I-S. Is I-B-L-E. Um, which doesn't appear to be playable. There should be an eight. Um, I was thinking burliest, but I don't think that's good. It would need a U, not the second I. Um, we're, we're looking for an eight ending in S making monks here, or an eight ending in the, in the T. I, sh I should have got this quicker, seeing as I used to be a... a Moderate keen golfer now turned into a slightly better moderate scrabbler usually. Um, but an, an easy one, which I didn't see immediately, was a golfing term. Birdies with a blank for D, making monks. Or Brianiest onto a T, which is very high probability as well. But... Um, there's a bunch of others, Rubyist, I haven't particularly heard of, but um, Granis is very high probability. And John has played Granis, indeed, that comes up quite often. Uh, Brianese itself is is good. As is Briony, uh, I think Brianese could be something to do with a fishing ship or something. So, Diane has still got her blank to go with a VTRDOI. Um, it's close to a deviator, but would need a float in E or A. The only floater particularly is the Y of FY, which is unlikely to have an 8 ending in the Y with the tiles that Diane has. Jessica thought that over tidy might be good ending in the Y, which was a, a good punt and um, would appear to have a good chance, but Quackle has told us it is unacceptable. So Jessica's undone her good words, good work of spotting Ovonix the other day at the Marco Rock, which the uh, player didn't at the time. But potentially it, it wouldn't be charged. It, is it good, Jess? No, it's not good. It, it's a, a good punt, but who knows? It probably would have been challenged if it had been played. But besides that, there's small pickings according to Crackle, like about 20 points is the, the highest. Oh, it appears Diane's actually played this, and I'm guessing it may be being challenged because Diane's rack hasn't been replenished. Yeah, John hasn't challenged it, so it, it's been allowed, so Diane's got a, away with that, but it seemed seemed plausible. Uh, John saw when Diane played it that the, the I that it makes 
just above the middle bottom triple would give him big points, such as Zaiti for 69 points, I believe. Though John's gone another quadrant on the board and played AX using the triple X twice <laughs> for 52 points, I believe. <laughs> Uh, Diane's potentially got a good rack, but the E of Overtidy is in the wrong place, and I'm thinking the Gatory or Geolatry may be good, but the, the E is in the wrong place for that, the floating E. So Diane's got a seven point deficit after John scored highly with AX. Uh, Diane may be, may be looking to take out the the I over tidy on the triple word. As we've seen, John has got a got a Z and he's still got his T and I. So next move, if Diane doesn't take that spot, he's going to get 69 points for Zaiti. So what can Diane do to take that spot out? Um, the best points would be placing the Y on the double letter square. But I cannot see a four begin with Y I uh, Geordie expression from up here. Um Jiry is good, but that's G Y R I, so the I is in the wrong position. Um Oily does the trick of taking taking that out. But not fully utilised in the um, the double letter square, but anything really will be ideal to take out John's 69 point reply, potentially. Oily does get rid of the Y, which is a very awkward tile. Seems Diane's played Riley in that spot, which is is no good. It would be R I L E Y, I believe. Hmm. Again, John hasn't challenged it, which is surprising, especially as if he challenged it off, he'd be getting sixty nine points straight back. So. John shouldn't be over trusting and, and challenge words over tidy seemed plausible, but but Riley didn't. I can recall years ago John played P R I X against me pricks as in Grand Prix, and was surprised when that came off. But some people challenge all the time, and it seems some people don't challenge challenge enough. So John's got W U Z N A I T was is a word itself, which is a past tense of was, I believe. Um, I played this the other week in a tournament, and it was actually challenge was. Yeah, Jessica's just saying that John's commentating to to Diane that he was going to play the Z where Diane's word went, but it was a phony, so John should have challenged that off. Sometimes people may may challenge it even if they haven't, you know, got only got a fly, five or ten percent inkling that the word's not good. But if that's a spot that they want themselves, it, it's worth doing it. I, I guess today will be a five point penalty challenge. Um, and it, it would have been worth that, but you know, it was it was definitely never going to be any good. So John's played ones, W A N Z, getting using his uh, heavy Ws and Zs, which is a good tactic. And Diane quickly has played G O O until he R, making Z O etc for 28 points to go into a 14 point lead. John's got a heavy vowel rack. Two I's, O-U-E-T-I-T-N. Um, a good vowel dump here is the E-U-O-I, which 
the, the board's quite tricky and enclosed. Um, there does not appear to be anywhere to play E U O I at this point in time. A hot spot, if anybody had it, was a A in front of the ZO for Azo and going down, making A V something which Diane's got, but it's it's not her turn. But um, John can't capitalise on that scoring spot. Nothing goes in front of Vide for a hook, as I said earlier. A no goes after it for a video, but K-O-T-A is not a valid word which it would make in this instance. <laughs> Potentially something like I O making O W on the W of ones may be a play, but not a good play. Um, both blanks have gone, and there's 19 in the bag. It would appear um, with at a quick glance, there's a sort of the sort of same opening proportion of vowels to consonants as the. Um, 42 to 56 that the bag starts off with. If John did play I, O, make no W, it would help balance his rack, but it would give sort of easy pickings potentially for, for Diane for nice hooks if she, if she did have good tiles. Diane's rack isn't bad, but I'd say for sure there isn't a bonus on there with Cab, C A B S A T E. It should, could be a, a a new verb in a new dictionary for if you're satisfied with your taxi ride. It could be cab sate, sate being satisfied. Um, so John seems to be playing quite quickly, but it is a very tricky rack. So he's taking a little more time. Exchanging IOU is the best move according to Quackle, which cannot be argued with. And the IIO that I've mentioned is the third best move. U Dons was the second best move playing through a D and an S somewhere. Oh, yes, it's in the bottom right hand corner just above the cheat. John has played uh, I-O, but in a more enclosed area, making O-A-R on the right hand, mid right hand side of the board. Um, Diane potentially has A-V-A through the V of the phony overtidy, making Azo, which would be 5, 6, 7, 8, 18, 36 points. But would keep a rack leaf for her of B-E-C-T-S, which is far from ideal but um and also it would give a s hook and there's besides diane's s she's got on her rack there are two more either in the bag or on john's rack um diane doesn't know if they're on john's rack or not we can see that they aren't they are not potentially for rack balances cab cab Next to um, ones, making a a w, but that would be a, a bit of a blocker. Uh, and Diane's played the a v e s, which scores pretty well, forty points, and um, stops John scoring. If he if he did have a, a suitable letter an S or an N, which he has got an N, making even. Um, John's scoring like an eight extra points for the even hook as well. Uh, John hasn't got the best rack to say the least. He's got tun tunnel plus I. Uh, I'll stick my neck out and say that there's no bonus on the board and that he'll probably end up playing L-U-N onto the S on the bottom corner to tidy his rack up. 
I believe L U N S is good. I could could be wrong. Um, Diana has got a pretty strong rack of Cob C O B rate R A T E, which from first glance I don't believe forms a bonus, but with a floater it could. But the board doesn't contain floaters for for eights. Diane's rack, if it was in second eights of the O, would be Bear, Cat, Cabaret, and Abri Act. Um, and Bear, Cat would be playable to the left of the W on the left centre of the board. But in reality, Diane's got a no and not two A's. So Diane's got a 47 point lead here, which really she's been fortunate with because she's got away with two phonies. And if John had challenged off the second one, John would have played Zaiti for 69 points and the score would be totally different. But um, only base the scores on what is not what could have been. Uh, the best best score is the quite miserable L U N on the S, which I suggested before. Another one I hadn't seen was um, putting the L before Azo for Lazo, making own L O N E, which is what John's gone for for twenty one points. So it's, it's scoring more, but it's keeping the the U. Um, so Diane's got a 26 point lead with a pretty decent rack and not many left in the bag. I can't quite see how many are left at this moment, but I'd say it's probably only about seven. Um, Diane plays Cobb quite quickly. Um, she potentially could have played B, A, C, keeping it more open, but Diane's got the lead and so it's not particularly in her interest to have an open board, even though um, she has got quite strong tiles. So other players may have played BAC, forming hooks on the B. Obviously, just an A or an O could go before that. So Diane has a 47-point lead. John, 3-3-3 three, 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 three points, has a rack of cumin, a spice, C-U-M-I-N, Plus ET. Um, as I say, the board is very restricted. It's going to be hard to score decently here. And John may wish to try to open the board a bit to pounce with a late bonus. There are eight tiles left in the left in the bag. If John did open the board based on me playing uh, Diane a number of times years ago. Uh, I think Diane would quickly close it down again. So it could be wise for John to score as many, many as he can here. A full letter word ending in C on the triple. I can't see any full letter word and then let's see with with uh, John's rack Diane's in a strong position here and she's got a fairly strong rack as well P-U-R-T-A-R-E when it's her turn and uh, with no reason for Diane to open the board up when it is her go A miserable place here for John could be CU just before the ES on the bottom left triple making Qs. Can't see anything else exciting or high scoring. Uh, my miserable play was his second best quackle one, and the top one is MEE on M13, which is down the bottom right hand corner. Uh, John's gone for EMIC to open the board but 
would say from experience that Diane is either going to close it down or capitalise it on herself. Um, I doubt if there's a 8 with Diane's rack plus the E or plus the M, but depending on how much time Diane's got left, and I'd say it's quite a bit. Um, she should spend a little time looking for a bonus there. I don't think upgrade is good. And I can see John's new rack has three bonus on, on it, which from top of my head are Eco Nuts, Conchus, and Uncoerced. Um, and John will just be hoping that there's somewhere to play one of these words, but believe me, I believe Diane's going to shut down any opening which is available at the moment. It could be something as simple as RAP above EMIC. But that would particularly give a nine letter playthrough through, say, the RE, which, although is un unlikely. Hmm. I don't think there's any bonuses with Diane's rack. Her rack being up rate, which isn't a, a word. I'm missing a, a bonus here. Um, if Diane plays it, it's very nice aperture onto the E. What well, John's just provided. Like, John really had to open the board to give him himself a chance of winning the game, but it all, always provides a, a hook or a playthrough for his opponent in this case. Aperture's playing in playable in two spots but obviously the most point is from a one utilizing the triple word score aperture being something to do with a camera lens or camera extension i'm not not high on technology um hopefully if i was playing this game i'd have seen it rather than um quackles seen it for me I'm not always the quickest at, at spotting spotting bonuses, um, and I do take take my time when I play, which we have got 25 minutes to, to utilise at the end of the day. So I'm hoping Diane um, is using her, her time time wisely and does come up with seeing this word rather than simply block John's um, counters and his his chances of winning the game. As I say, John's got three bonuses on his rack, seven letter words, but they're not playable. Um, unless smired is good. It's mired. I think smurring and smurred's good with a double R, but not, not a single R. Do you know how much time your mum's got left, Jess, please? So Diane's got less than seven minutes left, but there's uh, just a handful of tiles in the back. and um, You can't cash, cash in your time for points, so there's no harm Diane taking as much time as she wishes to try to get this this um, game, definitely game winning playing of Aperture. And Diane's seen it, which I'm sure she's very pleased with, which just about secures the game. John will be looking for a eighth at a play from the floaters that Diane has provided. Um, from the R, there's recount to count again. Um, but it wouldn't be a winning play, and there's only five tiles in the bag, which Diane's emptied with the word G-I-U-S-T. So John's very likely to play recounts to be probably about 30 points behind. And Diane could well go out with her G-I-U-S-T, which I believe is about to joust. The highest score is actually from a P-pound set. It's not, not a word I am familiar with. And this is just six points more than recounts the only two table bonuses. Yeah. 
It sounds to me like the, the game has finished with the talking that's going on. Oh, sorry, that's because uh, John's, John's played out and he's got he's got the points from Diane's rack. So Diane wins 4-5-8 to 4-4-6, a winning margin of, of 12. Um, so there were a few bonuses this play. Aperture was uh, probably the, the best play on the board. And Diane was fortunate to get away with two funnies. Oak tidy, which seemed fairly plausible, but John probably should have challenged it. And definitely the, the Riley, which um, could have been a game change if John had challenged himself and played Zaiti in the spot, the same spot for 69. But sort of quite a quite an exciting first game of the day and the first of the 17 games of the Michael Rock. Sorry, I'm going back to last Sunday. It's the winter match play today, Colin. Not the, the winter match play at Milton Keynes. And I'm sure we'll have 16 more exciting games coming ahead. <laughs>